Hey, I'm sure everyone has seen what happened on the show tonight. I just wanted to address one quick thing. Um, as you may have seen, Ryan was asked to leave the show and we have put out a statement saying that um, he's not welcome back on our air. Hey, so, hey, no, 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 you still call the anti Semite more than anyone else's table. table. Yeah. Yeah. And people by sit there and, no, by me. I never called you an anti Semite. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying you're saying I, mean, I don't. I'm, I'm a supporter of the Palestinians, so I'm used to it. It's yeah, I, well, I hope your beeper doesn't go off. <laughs> oh, say I should wow. die. You, you should not. No, I did said, you just say no, I should be killed. No, I'm I'm not, not I did not say that. No, I did not say that. Hold on, did you just say I should be killed? Let me, let me. Wow. Well, it seems as Trump gives a platform to those disparaging entire subsets of the American electorate with bigoted remarks. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. It was only a matter of time before dog whistles turned into blatant racism blasted through a megaphone. And this example on CNN last night just goes to prove that. While on CNN Newsnight with host Abby Phillip, professional Trump bootlicker Ryan Godusky made a comment during a heated debate with Midas favorite Mehdi Hassan as the pair sparred over racist jokes made by a comedian at Trump's rally. And as the debate grew more intense, Godusky and Hassan sparred over whether the latter had been labeled an anti-Semite, to which Mehdi Hassan responded, I am a supporter of the Palestinians, I'm used to it. And in response to that, this comment was made. If you don't want to be called Nazis, stop uh, doing- You're you called an anti-Semite more than anyone else's table. Yeah. Yeah. And people will sit there and- No, by me, I never called you an anti-Semite. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying you're saying I, mean, I don't. I'm, I'm a supporter of the Palestinians, so I'm used to it. It's yeah, I, well, I hope your beeper doesn't go off. The thing is, is did that you just oh, say I should wow. die. You, you should not. No, I did said, you just say no. I should be killed? No, I did not say that. Hold no, I did not say that. Hold on, did you just say I should be killed? Hold on, on live TV. I said I hope you're. Guys, let me just stop. You said you hope my beeper doesn't go off. You said I'm a supporter of the Palestinians. Hamas. Guys, let me stop. I said Palestinian. Are you? Am I what? No, of course I'm not. Ryan, I'm not. Ryan, I apologize. Are you a racist, I apologize. violent person I inciting violence against Ryan, me? Ryan, Ryan. That's disgusting. That is completely out of place. Good job, CNN. Let's have first block of say the Muslim guy you should be that. blown no, up. I apologize. On TV. I apologize. Don't, say, I apologize. don't say then wow. I apologize. You literally. Don't say I it. thought you said Hamas. Him. I apologize. You didn't think no. I said Hamas. Yes, I said yes, I did. I support of Palestinian rights. Why? Because when you hear Palestinian rights. What's funny is Rudy Giuliani said this yesterday, so you're a great guest to be here to defend Rudy Giuliani. Give me one second. Today, and so at this point. This is what we're in now. Can't this is America this. in 2024. Here's what I will say. Forget Here's the racism. I, that's right. It's I should that's die. Right. I didn't that's, say that, that. you, you said, what does, what does beeper mean? Don't give me a fake. I didn't say you should guys, die. Why did you say, with my beeper? What did you mean? What did you mean by the beeper? I said, what did you mean by the beeper? No, you didn't. You said, I hope your beeper doesn't go off. Ryan, stop talking. At least have the guts to support your racist comment. Hang on. I'm so sorry. I gotta bring it back. This is why. This is why yesterday's rally was disgusting. Don't call us Nazis, but I'm gonna threaten the brown guy as a terrorist and kill him. Because. I didn't ever say Donald Trump was Hitler, Man. but do you know who sat on a sta stood on a stage yesterday and said, I want to come to the Nazi rally? I don't have to make up words and call you something. You're saying it for yourself. And what you just said Kamala right Harris here, is a apologize, but I will tell you, I don't accept that apology. You didn't even That's say it to fine. me. That's fine. I didn't say That was you. disgusting. But I can be offended when you don't even That's... say it to me. I'm not Puerto Rican, but I was offended by what he okay. said yesterday. And I'm offended that the pr wow. former president and potentially future president would allow it and go for 12 hours and not say, I don't care. Because you know what? When Kamala Harris put out statements about switching up opinions, it wasn't good enough for Republicans. Why are you looking at me? Now, of course, first thing is, this is completely abhorrent. But the second thing I want to say is, having seen the response here, from this coward in real time when pressed on his bigotry. Let me ask you, viewers, does his comments on Twitter afterwards line up to the squirming, cowering mess that you see before you? That's right, the man who shrunk almost into his chair, apologizing, claimed that later on Twitter, quote, you can stay on CNN if you falsely call every Republican a Nazi and have taken money from Qatar-funded media. Apparently, you can't go on in CNN if you make a joke. Oh, so it was a joke. Is that why you followed the normal joke structure by apologizing profusely like a whimpering child after the punchline? I apologize. On TV. I apologize. Don't I say, apologize. don't say then wow. I apologize. You literally don't say I it. thought you said Hamas. Him. And what took place after the commercial is that both Godersky and Hassan had left the round table discussion, with Abby Phillip later stating that Ryan Godersky would not be welcome back. We're back here, and before we get started, I want to just address what happened in the last segment. And first, I want to apologize to Mehdi Hassan for what was said at this table. It was completely unacceptable. When we get this discussion started, you'll see that Ryan is not at the table. There is a line that was crossed there, and it's not acceptable to me. It's not acceptable to us at this network. We want discussion. We want people who disagree with each other to talk to each other. 
But when you cross the line of a complete lack of civility, that is not going to happen here on this show. It's a heated time. We're in the middle of a political season. We are eight days from a presidential election. But we can have conversations about what is happening in this country without resorting to the lowest of the lowest kind of discourse. Want to address that, and I want to apologize to the viewers at home uh, because we want to be able to hear each other, we want to be able to talk to each other, and we plan to do that in this next segment. I'm sure everyone has seen what happened on the show tonight. I just wanted to address one quick thing. Um, as you may have seen, Ryan was asked to leave the show, and we have put out a statement saying that um, he's not welcome back on our air. There is a line here on this program, and it was crossed. But I want to be clear as well that we did not ask Mehdi uh, to not come back. In fact, we really wanted him to come back and finish the show. We had a lot to talk to him about. Um, and we really hope that he'll join us again soon. But for those of you who are wondering why he did not come back, I just want to be super clear that that was not uh, in any way because we didn't want him back at all. And um, I won't speak for him, but I just wanted to make sure that you all knew that that was not what happened there. But what this goes to show firsthand is the true nature of the MAGA contingent, right? They'll come out and say blatant racist and bigoted things only to cower when pressed on them. I mean, listen, if you're bold enough to say it, then stand by it. Don't shrivel up and apologize only to go home, change your drawers and take to the computer like a keyboard gangster when the whole world watched you retreat into a sad state of self-loathing when held to account on your remarks. That is... MAGA in a nutshell. Most of all, Donald Trump wants us to think that this country is hopelessly divided between us and them. Between the, quote, real Americans who support him, of course, and the outsiders who don't. The enemies within. Because Donald Trump understands, and he's not wrong about this, that, that dividing people, making them angry, will boost his chances of being elected. It's not good for the country, but it might improve his odds. We, 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 we saw it last night. I, I know nobody's gonna boo now. All you're gonna do is vote. So the man holds this big rally at Madison Square Garden. And uh, the warm-up speakers were saying the most, we're, we're, we're trotting out and peddling the most uh, racist, sexist, bigoted stereotypes. One, one, one guy called Puerto Rico, quote, an island of garbage. Now, these are fellow citizens he's talking about. Here in Philadelphia, they are your neighbors. They are your friends. They are your co-workers. Their kids go to school with your kids. These are Americans. They're people. And, 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 and that is the reason why this election should not be close. It should be clear. He, here's a good rule. If somebody does not respect you, if somebody does not see you, as fellow citizens with equal claims to opportunity, to the pursuit of happiness, to the American dream, you should not vote for them. You should not expect them to make your life better. They will not help you make the, they, they, they will not help you pay the bills. They're not gonna, they're, they're not gonna, Work hard to make sure your kid gets a good education. They're not going to help you with a down payment on a house. I mean, we have to reject the kind of politics of, of, of division and hatred that we saw represented. America's ready to turn the page. America's ready for a better story. Philadelphia, we are ready for a president, Kamala Harris. And the good news is Kamala Harris is ready for the job.
Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.